And if Tesla goes south, it'll be because somehow they push Elon out and they bring in some Harvard guy. And I'm telling you what, it'll flush like, like the best toilet on the planet. The chair of Tesla, Robin Denholm, has hinted at the possibility of Elon Musk stepping back from his role at the electric car maker if shareholders do not support the chief executive's monumental $56 billion, $44 billion pay package. Denholm emphasized that there are numerous other ventures where Musk could devote his time and talents. Henry Ford I was a good example of uh, somebody who really didn't have the right education, certainly didn't have the right background, but had uh, that charisma and that drive and that intelligence to make things happen. Edison falls into the same category. Um, the problem is we don't see too many of those nowadays because they get educated into a, a, different, a different planet, a different, different zone. So you probably heard this a couple of times, um, but I, uh, I, I obviously I was also in manufacturing, but I decided to take a course that you can get in Canada that you can't get in the United States, where you become, for the most part, an engineer. You take all the engineering courses, but you take no humanities, no English, grammar, none of that. Uh, you're, you're interested in only the technology side. Now, they may not even have that anymore, but that's what I took. And so consequently, when you, when you just mentioned here that you uh, took psychology courses, I took those very late in life, after people started uh, trying to strangle me. And I've found now that, um, that, that's literal by the way, that's not a figurative speech. Um, but, but anyway, uh, I found now that without that, that third element, the ability to psychologically evaluate the situation and the people you're with, it, it makes it next to impossible. And that's, again, that's the third little leg in the stool here. For, uh, for Elon Musk. He, he has that, that charm or charisma or whatever the hell you want to call it, but the psychological background to know when he's pushed too far or maybe when it's time to, to change the subject or, or, uh, or any of the other things that he's done in the past that, that kind of make him uniquely different from, let's say, a Mary Barra or something. In the, uh, in the early 80s, I went to Japan <clears throat> and I got a chance to talk to um, Iji Toyota, the guy that owns Toyota, okay, or ran it. He knew how many spot welds there were in the rear compartment where the, uh, where the spare tire was going to sit. I was in a room with maybe 15 or 20 uh, executives. I was the lowest ranking person. I, I can't remember whether it was an eight or a nine, but I was definitely the lowest ranking person in the room. And they were asking philosophical questions or financial questions, things that didn't interest me at all. I was more interested in something that, uh, that I saw that I was really uh, intrigued with. And I asked, I said, this is not like the other questions, how many spot wells do you have in the rear trunk area? And I described it. And, and he came back and he, somebody else was going to answer, but they looked at him first. And he looked down the table, because he sits in the center of the table. He looked down the table and he said, you know, 111 or something, something like right off the top of his head. And then he gave me the diameter of the spot weld or the nugget. And then he, then he told me what the, uh, what, how many amps they were putting through each one of those things and how many gun shifts they had. And I'm sitting here going, are you kidding me? You just lost everybody in the room except for me. And the only reason I knew what was going on was because I used to work for a company that made that type of equipment, welding equipment. I was totally blown away. And, um, and because I asked that question, he actually invited me to dinner with, my, uh, with our um, interpreter and offered me a job, which foolishly I didn't take. But at one time, the Japanese were loaded with executives that were similar to what you'd find um, uh, with Elon Musk. And the same is true with Volkswagen or BMW or what have you. But they've all moved away. They've all moved away because, oh, no, no, you, you don't understand. You have to have an MBA. And that is, that is the downfall 
of North America. Actually, the downfall of, uh, of let's say, the, uh, the Europeans and the North Americans, because at the end of the day, they really hang their hat on it, and they always go back to the same thing. Oh yeah, we, don't you remember the whiz kids? What people don't remember is that that was the, uh, that was the turning point for quality. Quality went to hell in a handbasket because all you had to do is push the cars out the door. That's where the differential, that's where the difference lies. And if Tesla goes south, it'll be because somehow they push Elon out and they bring in some Harvard guy. And I'm telling you what, it'll flush like, like the best toilet on the planet. And that's, that's it. Should the shareholders decide against the pay proposal? In a letter addressed to investors, Denholm stated that the upcoming vote, set to take place next week, on what is considered the largest remuneration deal in the history of U.S. corporate governance, transcends monetary considerations. She underscored that regardless of the vote's outcome, Musk would remain one of the wealthiest individuals globally. Denholm pointed out that Musk might choose to step away from Tesla, or at least reduce his involvement with the company if the vote on June 13th does not favor him. Although investors had initially approved Musk's original $56 billion compensation plan in 2018, a judge invalidated the deal in January. Consequently, the board has been compelled to seek shareholder ratification once more. Denholm elaborated, Back in 2018 and still today, we recognize that Elon Musk is one individual whose time is not infinite. He is brimming with ideas and has many other avenues where he can affect significant change in the world, she wrote. We desire those ideas, that vigor, and that precious time to be dedicated to Tesla for the benefit of our shareholders. However, this necessitates mutual respect. Musk is deeply involved in other enterprises such as the aerospace manufacturer SpaceX, the artificial intelligence startup XAI, and the social media platform X. Some Tesla investors have voiced concerns about his capacity to remain focused on Tesla amidst his diverse commitments. Additionally, Musk's behavior on X, where he has amassed over 186 million followers, has irked some institutional investors, including Ross Gerber, who remarked that it has absolutely damaged the Tesla brand. In the shareholder letter dated June 5th, Denholm reiterated that the 2018 agreement was intended to ensure Musk remained focused on Tesla and driven to fulfill the company's unparalleled goals. Honoring our commitment by ratifying the decision we collectively made in 2018 is crucial. To keep Elon's attention fixed on Tesla and to inspire him to channel his time, energy, ambition, and vision towards achieving extraordinary results in the future, we must uphold our end of the deal, she wrote. Denholm further noted that the matter at hand is not financial, given Musk's enormous wealth. It is evidently not about the money. We are all aware that Elon is among the richest individuals on Earth, and he would continue to be so even if Tesla were to default on the commitment made in 2018. The compensation package, which includes options to purchase Tesla stock, requires Musk to hold on to the shares for five years before he can sell them. Currently, Musk's fortune is estimated at $203 billion by Bloomberg, positioning him as the third wealthiest person in the world. In the previous month, ISS, a prominent proxy advisory firm, advised shareholders to vote against the package, labeling the compensation as excessive. Another advisory firm, Glass-Lewis, has also recommended voting against it. However, Bailey Gifford, a significant investor in Tesla, has announced its intention to support the package, whereas CalPERS, the U.S. public pension fund and a notable shareholder, plans to vote against it. Musk owns about 13% of Tesla. The statement to shareholders prior to the annual general meeting indicates that Musk's stake will not be counted towards the vote, stating that the vote must represent a majority of Tesla stock not owned directly or indirectly by Mr. Musk or his brother Kimball. Denholm also urged shareholders to endorse relocating the company's legal headquarters to Texas. Although Tesla is currently incorporated in Delaware, Musk has been eager to transfer its registration to Texas, where its main offices are situated. Being incorporated in Texas provides the best platform for Tesla to grow and innovate, 
because we believe that Texas legislators and courts are in the best position to fairly develop and make decisions about corporate law that applies to Tesla, especially when our next big bet pays off beyond anyone's wildest expectations," Denholm wrote. Dan Ives, an analyst at Wedbush Securities, expressed that while Musk is unlikely to leave Tesla, he might relinquish his CEO title and reduce his involvement if the compensation package is rejected. Musk is not going anywhere, but if the compensation package is denied, he might eventually step down from his CEO role and become less involved with Tesla over time," said Ives. Purchase exclusively from our official website for the opportunity to resell the item at a significant profit in the future. The sold-out Cybertruck model is finally back in stock. If you missed the boat last time, this is your second and last chance to get yours and join hundreds of people who made thousands from reselling these special models with special serial numbers.